Hey, creative weirdos. So today I'm going to talk about just visually representing the tools that I used to make the film VLO. Honestly, it was a run and gun, well-planned, honestly, but run and gun uh, production. And the tool or the main camera body that I used was the Sony a7 III. Uh, as you can see right here, this beautiful, still to this day, amazing with a uh, small rig rig. And typically it would be full, you know, with the handle and everything like that, it would be fully rigged up. And honestly, for what this camera is, you really don't need much. People keep telling you, get the, get this new camera, get this, th look, keep it simple. This cell phone right now is an iPhone eight. It shoots 4k 60 frames. It might not be the best color science, but honestly, it's still amazing. So I'm saying is the tools are the tools. It's just for me, I come from you know the photography world. So I already had the gear and this was my onset unit stills camera prior to this camera, honestly, for unit stills, because this the reason I got this one was it had silent shutter and on set you need silent shutter. The one I had before was notorious very notorious being one of the loudest cameras, even for a mirrorless camera, which is the A7R, the original first Mach 1 A7R. Amazing 36 megapixel camera, honestly, but the click and clang of the, the shutter is just fucking annoying. But the images are so beautiful. So I had to literally go to Home Depot, get a Pelican case. Well, I ordered the Pelican case that would fit this camera with the cushion, the soundproofing and everything like that with a Pexi glass in the back so I can see the screen as well as I don't have it here, as well as an intervalometer that would allow me to use the shutter essentially without actually opening the Pelican box. So this camera, what I made my own as they call a blip, you know, in film industries back in the days, they shot, you know, unit stills in film and it would be loud, much like this. Usually it would be Nikons, you know, D5s and stuff like that, film cameras, because they were the, the standard back then. No one really shot on Canon, let's be very honest, back then for film stills. Nikon was always the best thing. So my lenses, honestly, uh, for the film were a mix of three lenses. So I had an old, I think it's 1960s Canon FD, one of the most beautiful lenses that I have because it is a 1.2 aperture, butter focus and everything like that, but it has an adapter for the Sony mirrorless cameras. And when you see the lead Isaac in front of the computer or anything close up like that, it was always that butter soft, butter softness of that lens. And then the go-to for distances honestly was the Sony native lens, the 85 1.8. This is always a go-to. Every camera that I've ever bought, for example, like the Nikons that I showed previously and things like that, uh, I would always buy an 85, I would always buy a 24, and I always have a 50. Because you, the three ranges, you know, you have your wide, your mediums, and your, and your telephoto close-ups, portraits. And as a photographer, that's what you need. But even in film, you have those things. If you have a zoom, zooms are very expensive, honestly. If you can get a zoom for a 2.8 aperture, you're paying an arm and a leg for that. You know, it's worth it, especially in film. Also, just a quick side note, there's something called very focal and parafocal. So parafocal is what you want when it comes to a zoom lens. It means if I'm zooming in, I don't have to refocus. If you can find a cheap parafocal lens, I'll give an example. In the movie Barry Lyndon by uh, Kubrick or The Shining when Jack Nicholson, they're pushing into Jack Nicholson, that's a parafocal zoom lens, meaning the focus is still on him. Once you set that focus, all you have to do is just zoom in and it stays in focus. And it gives you that, if you want to do a zolly, which is a dolly zoom, meaning you move in, but you also zoom in, you get that. Parafocal lenses. That's that's my next goal, honestly. If I'm going to ever buy new lenses for the Sony's, I would get a parafocal zoom lens. So the other last lens is an amazing, even though it's for a crop sensor, Sony crop sensor, Sony lens is the 16 mil Sigma. It's a native lens, but it's a Sigma uh, 16 mil 1.4. But when you put it on my full frame bodies, it will be equivalent to a 24. And this is, you know, I use this when I'm filming Dave, who, you know, plays the hipster drug dealer and Isaac, who's uh, Alex, when I'm shooting those scenes, it's on this wide angle. So all the wide angle shots, 
aside from being mounted on the bike, which is a cell phone, which is a Samsung S21 FE. That's on the bike when he's looking up like this bottom up look. And that's that's that shot. But most of the wides are done with this amazing. This is like when I bought it, it was like seven bills uh, just for prices and stuff like that. Uh, this was five. This I bought. Um, those two were new, but this I bought used for roughly, I think it was around $90. And honestly, these tools are amazing. Obviously, along with having, you know, a, a focus pull so I can manually focus pull, but, or I can use autofocus. Autofocus is always tricky depending on the systems because it would go pop, pop, pop. It would like do this searching. If you have a static shot, autofocus is amazing, but certain systems are not good sony's pretty fast especially this camera the a7 III is pretty fast for what it is honestly it has touch screen and everything like that but sometimes as a cinematographer you want that as like like a conductor type of aspect it's like music to me when i'm working with people where there was models back in the days photography wise or video wise or music videos and everything like that it would be manual focus because you're dancing you're like feeling it and it's like where you want people to see and this would be hooked up to the small rig with um, an arm and everything like that. That is my setup other than filters like the um, Black Pro Mist, which would turn these newer lenses. It would give you more diffusion. It would give you the more 90s, like, you know, soft, diffused, you know, um, the lights would be softer. It wouldn't be as harsh and, and, and very digital. And the beautiful thing about the 58 is it's an old lens, it's beautiful glass, and it already has that coating that gives you that look anyway, that soft look. Those are the tools that I used for the film VLO and hopefully for, depending on the projects of the budget, whether I rent other tools and everything like that. But on the lower end of what I personally have, those are the tools that I would generally use other than lights and, and boom mics that I have and everything like that. So this is my run and gun um, way I shot. So if you wanna know more, comment down below. I can explore more other aspects and tools in other videos. So till next time, peace weirdos. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the bell notification for more creative and educational content every week. Or if you need help with your upcoming film or story projects, check out our website and our new guided story structure notebooks that help make plotting your scripts and stories a breeze.